A cube has an edge of three feet. The edge is increasing at the rate of two feet every single minute. Express the volume of the cube as a function of m, where m represents the number of minutes that have elapsed. All right, so sometimes these problems are hard, right? Because you get a bunch of information and you're like, okay, express it in terms of m and the number of minutes elapsed and the cube is increasing. First, what you want to do is just get a basic idea, conceptual idea of what's going on. Right, so you sketch a little picture of a cube and the height of the cube is going to be at the start, it's going to be three feet. The width of the cube here, or you can call it the length, it doesn't really make a difference, is going to be three feet. All right, and then the uh, width, we'll call it, I guess, over here, is also going to be three feet. Now, what's happening? Every single minute, the cube is going to be increasing by two feet, as it says in the problem. So let's just play this out in our minds. Let's say two minutes elapse. Okay, what's going to happen? Well, the height's going to increase by two feet. Okay, so let's change the height here. So the height of the whole thing is increasing. Okay. What's also happening to then the length? Well, the length is also increasing by two feet, so let's move that on out. And then what's happening to the width? The width is also increasing by two feet, so let's move that on out. So something like this now. We lost a little bit of the cubeness to it, but I think you get the idea. So what happens now is that the height is now going to be five, right? Five feet. The length is then going to be five feet, okay? And now the width is going to be five feet. Cool. And if we were to continue this, I think you might start to see the pattern, okay? Now, let me first ask you, you know, what's the volume of the cube at the start before it starts expanding? What would you tell me? What would you say the volume of a cube, or the volume of any rectangular shape, right, is going to be length times width times height. I know we're dealing with a cube, so you can simplify this on down if you wanted to just simply going to be side cubed, right? Because the length and the width and the height are all the same. So it's just going to be the length of the side cubed, okay? And the length of the side here at the start is going to be three feet. So you throw it on in three uh, cubed is going to be 27, right? 27 and the units would be feet cubed then. So you're like, great. Okay, I got that. Uh, let me ask you. So this would be the initial volume, right, of the cube. I'll call it a little VI. What would be the volume then after one minute elapses? We say, oh, that's simple. After one minute, Andrew, I can definitely see that it went to five feet. So the volume then after one minute elapses is going to be the length of the side cubed. I know that the length of the side is going to be five. So I'm going to cube that. And when I do that, it's going to be 125 feet cubed. Great. And we're going to say, okay, wonderful. What happens in the next minute after two minutes now elapses, basically? You might say, oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to add another two to it, right? And it's going to be seven. And I'm going to say, oh, okay. and, and you're going to say, great. So I'm just going to take my formula again. And I'm going to plug in now seven. I'm going to cube that after the second minute that is, and that's going to work out to be 343 feet cubed. I'm going to say, great. Okay. Now let me ask you, what happens after 297 minutes? And you're going to say, what? That's now where this starts to break down. And that's the power of a formula now. Because now the question, now the, the, the number of minutes can get a little more challenging, but if we have a formula okay, that we can kind of create, we can calculate the easily, we can calculate the volume of the cube at any minute, at any point in time, after however many number of minutes elapse, okay? So what I'd like to do in this particular case is let's create a little table. Let's say the top is M and the bottom is going to be uh, the side length, okay? I'll just call it uh, S or something, okay? So M represents the number of minutes, so there's some initial side length, right? It's going to be three, we said. So if zero minutes elapse, meaning at the beginning, right, the length is going to be three feet. After one minute elapses, right, the side length is going to be five feet. After two minutes elapse, right, the side length is going to be seven feet. After three minutes elapse, right, and you can kind of get the picture. It's going to be nine feet, etc. right? Dot, dot, dot. Okay. I just learned something actually the other day that this little dot, dot, dot here is called an ellipse. I was reading a problem, right? And I'm like, the ellipse. I'm like, what the heck are they talking about? Ellipse? I don't, see, I don't see anything that looks like this. 
right? Ellipse. And it turns out that that's what this is called. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Comment down below if you knew that, okay? Because I, I feel like, I, I was like, oh, I had no idea that. I just called that dot, dot, dot. But apparently this is called an ellipse. So if you really want to sound smart, just say, yeah, just put an ellipse at the end and then just put some dot, dots, dots there. Right. Back to, where was I? Right, where am I actually? Right, okay. I'm in the front of the computer. Okay, right. I remember where I am. Now, what we need to do is to try to create a formula. Okay, we can kind of identify the pattern that after one minute, right after one minute elapses, this changes by two. Right, I had to add two to it. After another minute, I took that value and I added two to it. After that next minute, I added two to it. So now what I'm going to start to do is I start to recognize patterns. Okay, and that's really what formulas are. Formulas are just a nice, simple way to convey a pattern. That's all it is. All right. So let me do this. Let me just clear some space. I'm just going to move these values on over. Okay. And remember those V values represented the volumes at after certain points in time. So maybe what I should do also is let me erase this I. And let me just call it zero for now, meaning time zero. Okay, I'm going to leave the eyes there, though, just because I don't feel like erasing everything, but hopefully you get the picture. Now, we said that the formula for the volume of the cube is going to be simply side cubed or the side length cubed. Now, let's take a look at the initial position. So we know, and by position, I mean the initial state. So we know that the cube is starting at three feet. Okay, so it's starting at three feet. So I'm going to write three cubed. But I know if I just type this into the calculator, it just gives me 27. And that's just going to tell me the initial. So somehow I have to add something in here. Now, literally what you want to do is then go back to your little table and kind of identify that pattern. What's happening every single time the minutes change? Well, every single time the minute changes, I'm adding two to it, right? I'm adding two to the previous value, okay? So you're like, okay, well, should I add two then to three, right, in my formula? And I'll say that's a great idea, okay? So let's now expand this a little bit. And I'm going to say add 2 to it, okay? Now, you might say, okay, well, I added 2 to it, but it's still static. There's nothing necessarily dynamic about it. In other words, if I just do the 3 plus 2, it gives me 5. 5 cubed would have given me the value after one minute. So now the question is, okay, well, I'm almost there, but I have to now include this thing of m, right? That represents the number of minutes that have elapsed. So think about this now. You have to take an M and you got to place it in here somewhere. And this is where it gets a little creative, right? You got to place it in here somewhere. Should it be three times M? Should it be two times M? Should it be three plus two plus M? I mean, there's a whole bunch of, but should it be three plus two divided by M? Right? I mean, there's a whole bunch of possibilities. So what you want to do now is you want to think them through. Just think them through. You don't have to have a grand plan. Just think a little bit. And I promise you, you're going to get very far. All right. The problem is sometimes when we approach a problem, right, we get scared and we're like, oh, my God, I don't know how to solve it. And you just blank out. That's the worst thing that you can do. Right. What you want to do is you want to say, OK, I don't quite understand it, but let me start making some guesses. Let me just try some stuff. And what's going to happen is I guarantee you're going to see how to approach them, how to approach the problem, how to solve the problem. So now the question is, if I divide this by M, does that make any kind of sense, right? Where if, if the number of minutes elapsed is zero, well, then you have five divided by zero. That's even undefined. That doesn't make any sense, right? Then you might say, well, maybe I should add it, right? Maybe I should take my three plus two and I'll add M to it. Just think about how this will play out, right? If M is zero after zero minutes have elapsed, What's going to be the math in here? It's going to be 5, right? And then you're going to do 5 cubed, and that's 125. Is this the volume after no minutes have elapsed? No, no, no. It's 27. That doesn't work, right? And you might say, well, wait a minute. If every single minute, right, the uh, rate is changing by 2 feet every minute. Now, watch how beautiful this is. If I then multiply it by M, which represents the number of minutes, maybe that'll get me somewhere. Right? Now think about that. Think about that from a unit perspective. Two times m. What does that mean in terms of units? Well, the two represents the the uh, length, right? Two feet. Okay. And then basically two feet per minute means divided by the number of minutes. Right? So this is a rate, two feet every single minute. 
Now, if you take this and you multiply it then by the number of minutes that have elapsed, what happens to the unit of minutes? They cancel. And what unit are you left with? You're left with feet then. And that's what you want to find, right? This represents three feet initially. And now this unit also has to be feet because that's the only way you can ever add units together. They got to be the same unit, right? What's three, you know, what's three apples plus, if you had three apples and three oranges, what's the total number of apples? Would you say six? I hope not, right? You would say three. Why? Because you can't add three apples and three oranges together and find the number of apples, right? If I asked you then what's the total number of fruit, then you would add them, okay? But I'm not, so you got to be careful about what you're trying to calculate. If you want your answer to be in feet, you have to make sure that the f you're adding feet together, okay? So hopefully that makes a little more sense from that perspective. In other words, now when I do this on out, now if you just think this through, watch. If let's say the, the number of minutes elapsed were zero, this would be three plus two times zero, and then you would cube it. So what does this work out to be? It would be three. And then cubed would be 27. Okay, if instead of zero, it was, let's say, one minute that elapses. What would be the volume? It would be three plus two now, which would be five, and then cube it. Oh, wait, that would be 125. Oh, oh, I think I might be close. What happens if two minutes elapse? It would be three plus four, which would be seven, and then seven cubed is going to be, oh, 343. Oh, wait, is that pattern going to continue now? Yes, it will. You don't have to check out, right, the in infinite amount that's the nice part about math, right? Once you identify patterns kind of work in the first few times, it's probably going to be good. It's probably going to be okay. So what that means now is that this right here, ladies and gentlemen, represents our formula. This right here is now the answer. Now, if you had to do, let's say if I asked you, I forgot even what I asked you in the beginning, but if I said, what's the volume after 129 minutes elapses? You just plug in 129. <laughs> right? And you find the volume. That's the power of formulas. Don't hate formulas. Love them, okay? You, it, it, if, if it's hard and it's difficult, of course, you're not going to enjoy it, right? But that it's just like if you were to sit down, do, do you play an instrument? I don't know. You can answer me, but I won't hear you. But imagine you play, imagine you don't play an instrument and you sit down at the piano. Are you going to have fun playing the first time you sit down at the piano? Uh, I don't, I don't think so. Right? I remember when I first sat down on it, I was banging on the keys and couldn't really play anything. And I was, it was like, okay, this is not really cool. But if you stay dedicated and you practice and you become better at it, well, then you can compose a song. Then you can play something you want to play. Right? Then you can actually create music. And then what happens is you enjoy playing. All right? So keep practicing. Don't stop. The better you get at it, the better, the more you're going to want to do it. And the more you want, want to do it, the better you're going to get at it. That's the secret to success, ladies and gentlemen. Practice and reinforcement. Thank you so very much for tuning in. I appreciate it. If you can like and subscribe if this video helped you out at all. And if it didn't, well, I apologize. Maybe one of our other several thousand videos might help you. Check out our channel. Take care.